Scratch is a visual coding language developed by MIT to help kids learn how to code. Now I come with a good amount of coding knowledge from taking classes in college and high school, so I went into looking at Scratch very skeptically. My attitude was, I'm too good for this program, or am I? Now, most people would say playing with blocks is for kids, but Scratch is completely different. You start with a canvas and a sprite. Then you use different kinds of blocks that serve as functions to affect the sprite and the canvas. Like motion blocks that move the sprite in different directions, looks, which control the visuals of the sprite, and even sound, which can make the sprite say something. Hello. In this video, I'm going to speed run creating a simple game in Scratch. If you guess the right PR, I'll give you... Nothing. Do you really think I make enough to give you anything? I'm at like 420 subscribers. All right, so here we are. I have, I no, have clue no clue what, what to, to do. do. Obviously, I'm off to a great start, so I decided to back up and watch the tutorial they included. Or maybe just click through it. Then, I focused on trying to make the character move on screen. If, if key, right arrow pressed, then motion, move 10 steps. Nope. Oh, when this is clicked. Nope. 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 Oh, I need to add a like a repeating block. Boom. Cool. Duplicate this. If left negative ten steps. Boom. Nice. Alright, let's see if this works. Okay, well that doesn't work. Hold on. I right arrow, 10. Left arrow, negative 10. Down arrow, negative 10. Yep. I've got basic movement. Now what's a video game if there's no objective? No enemies to kill in order to win? So next, I worked on creating the bad guy that the character would have to defeat. Let's make an enemy. I think I want to make my own painted monster and I'm drawing with my mouse so it's going to look awful but yeah. oh god you know what maybe I'll use a circle we'll make a purple character I guess and the outline is going to have to be some form of dark purple circle <laughs> wow can I like oh that's nice Let's make a nice thick outline for this guy, and then we can paint on his baddie face. Ooh, too weird. I don't. I want him to be cute, but also angry. We're gonna make him like this with cute little monster eyes. Okay. Well, you know what? We're gonna use circles. I'm gonna use my own circle, something like that. Copy and paste it. Let's just erase like that and try and make it look as even as possible and there you go there he is angie guy group there we go group and then put it in the middle zero. Oh, okay zero zero size 70 oh i see what's going here so on the canvas i want him to be small i want him to be like 20. yeah let's make them yeah, a little bit more. Cool, okay, there we go. Purple. Next up was another bad guy. I'm gonna make a baddier baddie. More menacing eyes. He's gonna have to be bigger and also a different color. I'll make him more red. Hmm, how else can I make him look angrier? Super angry eyebrows. So yeah, baddie one, baddie two. I'm gonna name him Big Baddie. After the enemy creation was complete, it was time to make the hero of our game. 
At this point, I hadn't really thought much about the theme of the game, so I took a minute to decide and came up with a janitor character that would exterminate germs with his spray bottle. Let's give him a mask. Something like this. Cool. And the last thing is his weapon. I'm gonna give him a spray bottle. Group. Nice. That's our character. So we're gonna name him Janitor. So after finishing the main character, I worked on making the enemies match the theme. I'm gonna change the colors of this guy to like green, like a weird pukey green. You know what? I think they need to be wiggly. If they're wiggly, then they're icky. So maybe giving him some texture, make him look more germ-like. Now he looks like a germ. And this guy needs to look way menacing. One, I guess I could make him look like a devil by giving him like big horns. But also, oh, -ho, big guy. I think he looks menacing enough. Then it was time to work on the background or the setting of the game. So time to go back to the stage. Let's paint our own backdrop. All right, let's make this a bathroom. Let me get slightly blue. Let's go for like tile. Now I purposefully kept the art of this particular game simple because I knew the real mountain to climb would be the code and functionality of the game, but I never intended on the game's code taking quite this long to understand. Either way, the struggle was definitely worthwhile and I learned a lot on the way. Alright, so we've got our backdrop. Background. We've got janitor, we've got big baddie and baddie. So first, I tried making my first clone of my baddie. So, events when this is clicked. Ooh. Um, create clone of, well, create clone of baddie. Then looked back at my character sprite and realized, oh, you know what? I deleted my thing. No! <laughs> How do I go back? I deleted my code. God, okay, I'm gonna go look back at my code and copy it. Left, right, up, down. Let's play. Cool. Then I worked on getting the bad guy to motion track to the player. This part was difficult to figure out alone and I ended up consulting the scratch documentation and some tutorials to figure out just how to accomplish it. The main complication I had was that the character would only track to the recorded position of the main character when the code executed. So if the character moved, then the sprite would move to the last position of the player, and then the next, and the next. Finally, I was able to find a way to have the sprite continually track to the player. So point towards, point towards the janitor, move 10 steps. Okay, one, he's way too fast. Two, I don't want him to flip over. Set rotation style, and don't rotate. This way, he follows him everywhere. After that, I added some code to stop the enemy from moving if it was touching the player and then resume movement otherwise. Now play. Okay. I worked on creating the rounds for the game to spawn enemies in next, but the code I thought up caused each instance of the enemy to duplicate causing the game to get exponentially harder. This wasn't a bug I was up to crushing at the moment, so I took a break and worked on some other stuff like weapon mechanics. First up, I made a crosshair. Now, I wouldn't end up using this in the final product, 
but it was relatively easy to make considering the mechanics were parallel to the enemy tracking just instantaneous and tracked to the mouse cursor. I decided then to focus on the spray bottle attack animation and function in the game. I started by making a spray cloud that would come out of the spray bottle and then made functionality for the player to click and spray. I got the spray bottle to spray upon holding the primary click button down and I'd end up changing this later to spray it for a few seconds after the player clicked. But aside from that, I also figured out how to have the cloud's direction track to the player's mouse with different rotation methods. I also applied this to the characters so that they would always face the mouse. After that, I changed the sprites and their code to better reflect the look I was going for. Instead of having the entire character rotate, I had the hand with the spray bottle rotate around the player's head. I also added some code to change the direction of the spray bottle when on the left side of the sprite, so that the player's hand would always be upright instead of upside down at certain points. My next complication was getting the spray bottle's spray cloud to track to the player at all times, and be correctly positioned on screen to look as though it's coming out of the spray bottle. And this is where I massively failed because I actually wasn't able to get the cloud to track to the player at all and ended up editing the sprite and making it so that the cloud would stay in place. If you guys can think of a solution to this problem, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think I should have done. After that was said and done, I moved on to creating code for the enemies colliding into the cloud and taking damage. This involved learning how to add an HP variable and adding a loop for taking damage which would affect the sprite. I also had to control the appearance of the sprite so that when the enemy's HP reached zero, it would disappear and no longer have any impact on the game. At this point, I still hadn't worked on the bug where the baddies would create clones of themselves resulting in an exponential infestation of the game. So now, it's time to exterminate. I was able to figure out that by creating a clone of myself in the baddies code, I was essentially telling each baddie to duplicate, which is what caused the exponential increase. So in order to avoid that, I would have to create each baddie in the world code by creating a create a clone function that had the baddie as its variable, which would make one baddie any time that it is called. After quelling the onslaught of baddies through my code, I copied over the new baddie code to the big baddie, then I worked on designing my rounds. I ended up with one solid round where the player would have to defeat a certain number of baddies and then a certain number of big baddies. Some quality of life upgrades were added to the game next. I realized that there was no real indication of a baddie getting hurt aside from them vanishing when they hit 0 HP, so I created a hurt expression for both characters and created some code to animate their hurt expressions every time they lost an HP point. And games aren't fun without a goal in mind, so I added a score to keep count of how many germs the player killed. I did this by creating some graphics to show on screen, and a variable for the score which would go up every time a germ was killed. Still, my character is invincible, so I added some mechanics for HP and a graphic on screen to show the character's HP level. Along with that, I added the code to make sure that the player's HP went down any time they touched a germ. Oh, and I created a hurt expression for the character as well and then made sure to add the code so that it worked. The most difficult part by far was adding a recoil mechanic to the enemy characters. For this, I had to figure out how to move the characters on screen so that once they hit the player, they would bounce back in the opposite direction. Obviously, there is definitely some easy math equation or mechanic that has been thought up in order to accomplish this, but I felt like doing it on my own. To mixed results. I went for having the sprite turn 180 degrees and then gliding to a location that was negative a certain number in the x value and then the same for the y. While this works in one quadrant of the screen, it doesn't in others, but it was good enough for me to move on and focus on the next step. In this part, I tried to make a working lose screen, which seems simple enough, but requires a lot when it comes down to creating the code to stop all game functions and also reset variables. I tried it for a little bit, but my exhaustion got the best of me, and here I decided to call it time. In the end, I had my first real working game made completely with a children's game engine. And the funny part is, the game sucks. It's so bad. But. It just goes to show how much I still have to learn despite my experience and age. There's definitely some 12 year old out there on god mode who's already learned how to remake Minecraft and I can't even make a simple working game. I mean it works, but there's 
a lot of bugs. Humility is a large part of learning game development, so I guess I can say I did all right. I think in the future, I'll definitely plan further before starting development in order to make my code less adverse to change in edits. And while I highly doubt creating a crappy game in Scratch will trend as big as Only Up or Minecraft in the speedrunning world, it was fun to challenge myself to create a game as quickly as possible. Speaking of, here's my time. I'm sure you can beat it.